Stop. Have you checked your privilege today? I'm talking specifically about your clothes hanger privilege. Now, when you think of luxury, you probably think mansions, private jets, having a yacht. But what about your clothes hangers? The fact that clothes hangers not only exist, but that they are mass produced and sold in stores all over the world might seem rather uninteresting, but it would have been mind boggling to people just a couple hundred years ago. We don't actually know who invented the clothes hanger. There were versions of it for centuries, but the modern versions of hangers didn't really kick off in a way where most people would own them until the 20th century. In 1906, Meyer May became the first retailer to display clothes on a wishbone style hanger. And today there's over 200 different patents for clothes hangers in the US alone. But think about that just for a minute. We have records of written human history going back to about 3400 BC. So we've got about 5400 years of recorded human history. And it wasn't until the last 120 years that it even became reasonable to think about the mass production of an item that would help you manage your wardrobe. That's because for most of human history, the vast, vast majority of people not only wouldn't have had the money for such an item, they wouldn't have had any real use for it, since the idea of having more than a couple of garments was something of a pipe dream. And as simple as they are, clothes hangers are actually a symbol of prosperity and abundance. Consider this. In 1800, there were about a billion people in the world and about 90% of them were living in extreme poverty. Within the space of 200 years, the world population increased from one to 7.7 .7 billion, and the percentage of people living in poverty didn't go up, it dropped to less than 20%. That means that a lot more people are not only able to better feed and house themselves, but clothe themselves as well. And with more clothes available, more storage options were required, and the market responded to the demand. Now again, this seems, I don't know, mundane, but I find this incredibly interesting because it almost seems counterintuitive. After all, in a world of finite resources, wouldn't a sunnet boom in population signify a greater strain on those resources? How did we go from 89% of a billion people living in extreme poverty in 1820 to less than 20% of 7.7 .7 billion living in extreme poverty by 2015? I mean, for most of human history, strict class systems govern human advancement. The belief that wealth came from conquest and domination was prevalent in societies all over the globe. And prosperity was often seen as a zero-sum game, where if you had it, it's probably because you stole it from somebody else. But the rise and prevalence of free market ideas starting in the 18th and 19th centuries popularized the idea that one could innovate, build, and acquire wealth through serving customers as opposed to dominating them. The result has been that within a very short time relative to human history, people, including poorer people, are enjoying access to products and services that even the wealthiest of people wouldn't have dreamed of a couple hundred years ago. Microwave ovens, televisions, smartphones, washing machines, and yes, clothes hangers. So the next time you hear that everything is doom and gloom and that everyone's getting poorer, just remember that the numbers don't reflect that. And something as simple as a clothes hanger can be a symbol of that reality. So don't check your clothes hanger privilege. Celebrate it and look for new ways to create and innovate and share within the marketplace so you can improve not only your life, but everybody else as well. Do you know of any other simple inventions that exist today that only the wealthy could have dreamed about 100 years ago? Share it in the comments on our YouTube and Facebook page. Also, check out our other videos on the Y Minutes.